my story is going to be about the pastry machine that's about to save some lives. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's more likely than you think. <laughs> <laughs> so, have either of you been to Japan? No. No? I've not. Okay, well, I want you to picture what you think Japan looks like. Picture you're in Japan. It looks like picture a sock, your... doesn't it? Looks like a sock. What'd you say? Yeah. Well, it looks, looks more like, like a sock. A, an island, I think. <laughs> I should specify. Imagine you're in a bakery. You walk into a bakery in Japan. Okay. You walk in, you see some nice baskets full of uh, some nice pastries. You pick up a few, you go, oh, I want one of these. Ooh, I want one, one of these. these. I'm going to pick it up. Ooh. You put it on the counter. And suddenly above you, it just says, oh, you've decided to go with these breads. The cashier looking at you is like, just talking to you, just like, hey, how's your day going? They don't touch the bread. They don't even look at the bread. And off you go. <laughs> and it's all because the machine is figuring out what you're buying. And not, I and saw not about this. Cashier. Yeah. Hizashi, I'm going to butcher this name. Hizashi Kambe, the founder of computer programming company Brain Limited, took on a new project in 2007 at the request of a restaurant chain that wanted to open a new line of bakeries. Yeah. And the problem was bread. God, isn't that always the problem? I know. Too much of it. Too much, to not specific. enough. There's Too no... much bread. So Japan has an extensive history of importing bread and like pastry treats from uh, from other countries such as Portugal and France, leading it to be considered somewhat of a delicacy. Uh, an early 21st century analysis demonstrated that bakeries could sell more bread the wider variety of bread that they offered. So for example, a bakery that, so that sold 100 types of bread would sell twice as much bread as a bakery that sold 30 types of bread. It was also found that naked pastries, which is like bread or like pastries that are presented like in an open basket kind of mm -hmm. situation, not like packaged, they sold up to three times more than individually wrapped pastries. Ooh. So these two factors came together to present a really big problem. Oh, I get it. You have hundreds, in a single bakery, you have potentially hundreds of different types of bread and there's no wrappers on them. There's no barcodes. There's no nothing for scanning. So the cashiers are like, well, what the fuck am I going to do? Well, they say it in Japanese, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> they spent literally, it, it said that they, it took them months, sometimes up to months to learn all the different types of bread. <laughs> You're going to say months to ring it up. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> have you got a couple of months spare while I, while I bring up your order? <laughs> you just stand there. <laughs> oh boy. Like you, oh, you go into work. You're like, I'm sure I could pick up some bread before work. And you're like standing like, oh no. I've got, oh, a, gosh. I've got a train in April. Oh, wait, it's <laughs> April now. I've got a train in June. <laughs> Anyway, so this was a unique problem mm -hmm. in that queues were getting longer in bakeries. Customers were getting more and more dissatisfied. You know, bakeries were losing sales and all of that. And uh, the staff weren't very happy because they had to spend months learning all the different types of bread, often which were seasonal types of bread. So that by the time you learned it, it was gone and there was a new type of bread that you had to learn. <laughs> Instead, it's bread. It's bread. <laughs> it's bread, right. So this is where brain comes in. Starting the project full time in 2008, after the global financial crash, uh, dried up all of Brain's other work. So they're just like, let's go full steam ahead on this bread thing. Uh, Hizashi and his team would start developing a program called Bakery Scan that involves a system of algorithms, all of which have a specific task of identification. One algorithm would be tasked with the shape of the pastry. Another would identify the color of the pastry. It goes on and on and on. There's like different types of things you can pick up on. Most The size of the like bakery. Most ba pastries are like brown circles or like, you know, brown loaves, well, though, aren't they? This was also a problem they ran into eventually <laughs> because they were like, well, a lot of bread just looks like bread. Um, a lot of them look quite similar and it's hard to tell the difference. <laughs> it's a brown loafy shape. It must be bread. <laughs> but which kind of bread? Uh, we've got about 80 types of bread here that this could be. So after the first <clears throat> two years of this project, they developed... 10 prototypes of bakery scan, none of which were, ac were, were accurate enough, just to say frankly, to be used um, in a practical setting. They found that the prototype struggled with a number of issues. Like we just said, bread looks like other types of bread. <laughs> Generally, yes. Generally, yes. Uh, there's, there's not much uniqueness in bread. You know, it only goes so far. Um, so they created new subsystems to control for, the, for, for so-called pastry anomalies. Um, <laughs> Conditions that would otherwise lead to misidentification. A mis it's, like a, it's like a perfectly straight croissant or something. I don't know. Or it's like a, a croissant in the shape of a donut. I don't, I don't know. I'm just making shit up here as I go. I can just tell. Some, I just can something tell. that's misshapen. Or sometimes two pastries would be stuck together. 
and it would look like a bigger pastry, right? As we all know, that only counts as one. And so it would be like, well, it's actually this big pastry, but it's not the big pastry. It's just two tiny pastries stuck together. Oh, such a headache. So they had to account for that stuff. <laughs> the equivalent of like two kids in a trench coat. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> but it. The pastry. I would like an R-rated film ticket, please. <laughs> um, they also had to experiment with lighting because they found that the inconsistent lighting of the bakeries they were selling in um, would often lead to different results for the same type of bread throughout the day. Um, so they had to experiment with different types of bulbs, different types of lights. They eventually found that like a backlit panel kind of underneath and some light, some light from above would get rid of basically all the shadows. Um, some scientists are sending us to space or finding out how the Amazon rainforest and others um, are investigating bread. Yeah. Others are looking yeah. at, looking at how the to real issues. Identify bread. You know, I'm, I'm going to go into a bakery more than I'm going to go into space in my lifetime. You don't know that. What if there's a bakery in space? Then you might be going there every single well, day. <laughs> this is why we need bread scientists to deal with the space bakeries. Anyway, after five years, it took five years of development. So it was now 2013. They had a fully operational bakery scan that could identify any type of bread with almost 100% accuracy. Uh, and it was completed and launched in the same year, 2013. Efficiency of bakeries skyrocketed, giving cashiers less stressful working conditions, more personal interactions between them and the customers. And eventually, uh, of course, the queues went down. So there Very were good. more customers overall. And they made more sales. And it was all happily ever after. Very good. It was rolled out to loads and loads of bakeries. Very so if you cool. go to Japan, you'll probably see that. But that's not it. Oh, good. What, what last, else could there be? The last part of my story is that Four years later, in 2017, a doctor saw a television segment about bakery scan and realized that under a microscope, cancer cells look a bit like bread rolls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't love science. <laughs> and so from there, he reached out to, to, to Brain Limited and to Huzashi, and they began repurposing the technology to inspect blood samples to detect cancer. Now, this is ongoing, so I don't, I don't, I don't know if we have a fully completed... Uh, working version of this yet but uh so far i can i can confirm that it is working to some extent now that they can they can give like they can just take a sample of blood do a whole scan of the blood sample under a microscope and then the technology so far can literally just look at that and go there's a bunch of cancer cells here 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 and just point them <laughs> straight out and be like and differentiate between other types of cells and go boop, 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 boop. and so yeah, but this, this is where we're at. This artificial intelligence still thinks, not that, it, not that it thinks, not to humanize it too much, but it still thinks it's looking for bread. It's like, man, there is a lot of bread here. <laughs> I think it's changed a little bit. Wow, but look yeah, at this. At its core, it's going, where's that sourdough? Yeah, like, exactly. Mm. <laughs> You've just told. <laughs> it still thinks it's looking for bread. You're just showing it blood. It thinks that blood cells it's are. It's just like a Where's Wally book. And it's just like, find the bread rolls. And it's just like, da 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 da. There it is. Oh, wait, it was cancer. Okay, we've saved someone. Good. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. That's and really that's, cool. And that's where we're going. And that's where technology is going at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on all SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs>